your very kind word and uh, uh, i will in the beginning want to emphasize that this is not the whole fracture treatment or management uh, that will have quite a few lectures uh, already uh, i have done two lectures one on structure of bone and one on fracture healing and so this is in the series of that this is a third lecture on that series which will be just a simple principle of fracture fixation so it won't be telling you about the complication fractures or i won't be telling you how to fix an individual fracture this is just to understand some concept of the fracture fixation so that's that's the main uh, uh, talk for today uh, and we will uh, go through few concepts of uh, how fracture should be fixed or what are the thing you should be thinking when you uh, when you want to decide uh, in in fixing a fracture so let's start so i was yes, mentioning sir. before that uh, today's topic is uh, not individual fracture fixation or complication of it today just to understand the basic principle how to use different implant in fracture fixation and that's the aim of today's topic so uh, if you see a simple fracture which is uh, one of the commonest like a, a a fibular fracture it can be fixed in many ways as long as you understand the principle of it uh, uh, sometime people may be fixing it uh, by uh, by putting a plate like this and then you need to know what is the mechanism of this plate how what is the role of this plate in this fracture fixation which is being placed posteriorly uh, to prevent the gliding of this fragment and there is no screw in the distal fragment so uh, what what is the mechanism of this fracture fixation whereas uh, at the same time some other surgeon may be fixing it with a lag screw and then putting a plate on it and then you need to understand why this is different than other although almost similar fracture so these concept you need to understand in uh, in in uh, principle of fracture fixation also we want to uh, give you some guidance when you faced with complex fracture that uh, what are your aim what are the question you should be asking yourself that what do I, what, what kind of implant i need and and before you jump for an implant your aim and goal of fixation of this fracture what kind of healing what uh, what, what what kind of reduction and then once you understand that then it really doesn't matter you can use different implants in different mode and achieve the same goal so uh, that's what we're trying to understand similarly this fracture uh, you may be uh, asking questions that why these fractures we not thinking of nailing whereas most of the diaphyseal fracture we think of nailing and if you're not thinking of nailing then what kind of implant are best for this fracture so these are the question we're trying to answer also trying to answer that sometime uh, you half heartedly understand the principle of fracture fixation and then you can be doing more damage to the patient than any good this these kind of fracture uh, probably would have Uh, better if you not fixed it with this kind of fixation and we'll try to critique that why this fracture has failed uh, not because of anything uh, fault of patient which we normally say it, uh, but it is fault of the uh, you as a technician not understanding the technique or the principle of it whereas the same fracture if, if left uh, in simple collar and cuff sling might unite whereas your fracture is uh, never going to unite and cause more and more complication and also to understand that uh, why sometime uh, a two resid may not be too good uh, and we will explore these principles today so as i said we have already done two lectures uh, last lecture was on bone healing which i already told you about difference between primary and secondary healing in primary healing and secondary healing both there can be a different kind of bone formation uh, which we dealt with and how the contact healing and gap healing happened and we discussed parent strain theory that how if the if the movement at the fracture side or strain at the fracture side is minimal you can have a primary healing and if it is uh, somewhere uh, medium strain between 2 to 10% as we mentioned last time how to measure it quantify it and that can give you secondary healing but if there is too much too much movement then it can be dangerous and you can get into non union so we discuss all these factors so that the biology of fracture uh, fracture healing today we doing is mechanics of fracture healing and that's a, one of the beauty of orthopedics uh, for 
you guys who are lucky to doing orthopedics that uh, not only you deal with the human anatomy and biology, you also deal with mechanics. Uh, and, 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 and then you combine these two to get the best biomechanics to help the patients. So today's uh, main role is to understand the mechanics of fracture fixation and we'll understand a few concepts like lag screw concepts, uh, role of plate in different mode. Uh, nowadays, a lot of uh, people talking about locking plates and they've become a fashion and we will talk a little bit about uh, where they are important and very useful and where they are dangerous and, 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 and misapplied. So we'll talk about those locking plates uh, and we will also uh, talk a little bit about uh, concepts of uh, nailing and uh, why nailing is important and uh, what kind of fixation it gives. And then we will uh, tell you briefly about external fixator, but that's uh, already been touched in one of the lecture by Professor Gopa Kumar before. And uh, I'm sure when we talk about uh, Elisera fixation as a separate topic, we'll, we'll deal with uh, in detail about the external fixator. So we'll just talk a little bit about that today. So th this is the aim and the goal of this uh, talk today. So let's start from the very beginning, internal fixation. So when you want to fix a fracture, and that's you are all orthopedic surgeon, you are excited to fix the fractures and uh, uh, you, before uh, before realizing that uh, you don't understand the principle of fixation, sometimes you go and get implants which are not good for that fracture, and then you can be doing a misservice to patient rather than doing anything good. So the first thing you have to ask uh, is, what kind of healing I want here? So every fracture either can heal by direct healing or indirect healing. And as we mentioned previously, the bulk is indirect healing. The direct healing is specific condition, some diaphyseal fractures and some intraarticular fracture. And most of other time, you want to consider an indirect healing. So first question you ask, do I need a direct healing here or do I need an indirect healing here? And, or do I need a hybrid here? Sometime an intraarticular fracture extending into metaphysis, you may need direct healing at some place and indirect healing at some other place. So you ask these questions first thing. Then ask, how can I achieve this? Can I achieve it with, with, the, with the open or closed method? So indirect reduction or direct reduction. So for direct healing, obviously you want a anatomical reduction and you want compression, as we mentioned previously, for, and that for that you will need a exposure of the fracture. But most of the indirect healing you can achieve by indirection, indirect uh, reduction technique or closed technique. And then the smaller portion is the implant because many implants can achieve the same goal. And then, then you ask what implant will be best suitable for this particular fracture. And that's what we're going to give answer to this or we want you to, whenever you see a fracture, think in these lines, what kind of healing I want it? How do I achieve this? And those, those are the two questions you have to ask. Uh, and then you will get the answer that what implant you want, which may not be that important. And then these two questions first to be answered. So let's start with first the base, the basic of, uh, of the implant, the surgical screw or the bone screw. And this talk is all available on internet and everywhere. So there's no secret about it. Chris Colton's talk on uh, OTA about the screw. And then we'll talk a little bit uh, detail about the bone or surgical screws. So...